Hello, my name's Sam and welcome to my channel Frugalissima where I talk about all things sewing. <laughs> Today is day 18 of 100 days of sewing and today I'm just going to run through some machine basics. I've had a request to uh, show people how to thread up uh, my machine so that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, but first of all, thank you for everyone who's been watching these videos. It's truly is appreciated. If you would like to subscribe or uh, just leave comments below, anything that you want to know, uh, just leave me a comment below uh, and the notification bell will tell you when I've got new videos coming. I'm trying to film uh, Monday to Friday. It's proving a little bit uh, difficult at the moment because I'm back to work, but I'm doing my best. Uh, but we'll, we'll get through this 100 days or so and come what may. Uh, so on to today's video. So I was requested to uh, give a demonstration on how to uh, how to thread up my beloved Janome XL601, which is right here beside me. Um, I got this scored this second hand. Uh, this should be about retail at about three hundred and fifty pounds or something like that, and I got it for about one hundred and seventy five something like that five or six years ago and it's been an absolute dream. Uh, it does everything that I need it to do. Um, the, I've, I've still got my old machine, which is a, a Jones. Uh, and what I've done on this video is done a demonstration on how to thread this one up. Uh, but just in case anybody has come from uh, a different, uh, like the old mechanical machines, like my old drones one, show you how the, the, the slight differences uh, that there are in threading it up. And it's essentially just how the, how the bobbin is inserted really. Uh, the spool, it's a horizontal spool on this one uh, and the vertical on the old one, uh, but the bobbins, uh, how you access the bobbins are slightly different as well. Uh, and just as a little bonus, uh, I've just uh, done a little cleaning tutorial as well. Mine needed cleaning, so I thought I'd just include it, include that as well. You do need to clean your machines. To the best of my knowledge, these genomes do not need oiling. Uh, I've never oiled mine. Uh, it's been serviced once uh, in the time that I've had it. I realise quite a lot of people are, are new to sewing and uh, this, I thought this would be useful if you just got a, a new machine and you wasn't quite sure uh, how to thread up, up your machine or if you've just borrowed it from somebody, if you can't find the instruction manual. So onto the video to show you how to thread it up and a little bit of cleaning maintenance as well. Okay, so uh, you need to make sure that your thread is coming out um, like that, so that the, the thread is coming from behind the reel, uh, so that when it's on the bobbin, when it's on the pin, uh, it's coming from underneath rather than on top. So that's your first step. Second step is to thread it through the thread guide, this thread guide here. There's little arrows on, so you can't really go wrong. The thread then goes down this thread guide here, underneath here, and then this is your take up lever. So making sure that your needle is up to get it through the uh, this take up lever here. Bringing your thread, that's to my right, to the machine's left of that take up lever. And then you, you click it into there. Just make sure it's clicked in. Bring it back down. So bringing it back down and then you've got your number four there. And you've got a little guide underneath that you need to click it underneath. Hopefully you can see this uh, thread guide here. This is your number four thread guide. And your thread goes behind there. And then finally, thread goes to the thread guide right next to the needle here and to thread it you need to lower this thread needle threader here and you wrap around your thread under that hook to wrap it under the big hook first and then there's a smaller one beside it and then you just flick up that 
trigger there and it brings your thread through. She just like that. So that's threading the upper thread. The bobbin thread, you will need a full spool. Uh, I'm just going to show you how to do it first and then I'll show you how to fill the, fill the bobbin. So again, this the thread needs to be coming off that way to, towards me. Bob it in there. This is a drop-in bobbin case. It just drops in there. And then there is a little groove here. And you can see there's a little arrow. Hopefully you can see there's a little arrow there. And you insert your thread right to that little groove there and pull it back. And then with your pulling the top thread to the back, you're going to either wind hand crank your needle up and back down again. Keep pulling on the top thread and it will pull that bobbin thread through. And I'm just using what I've got to hand to pull that through. And then you need to replace, before you start sewing, you really need to replace that lid. That goes back on there, like that, and you're ready to sew. Okay, to wind your bobbin on, you need an empty bobbin uh, spool. And uh, if you bought this machine new, you will get two or three of those, these free. And you just need to bob it onto this um, bobbin winder here. And to disengage your needle, you just push it over to this um, stopper here. So the thread is already on the um, pin and you just need to wind it around this tension pin here. So not around at the back where you do where you wind where you thread it for your machine. It's it's there's a little screw on the top. Just bring you in a little bit so you can see. Going around there. And then you thread it goes into the bobbin case here. Pull it up an inch or two. Pop it onto there, back onto there. Disengage. And you just keep hold of that. I've got the pedal below me, so I'm just pressing on the pedal very gently. Wind it a couple of times. Don't forget to um, put your stopper onto your thread. To stop it shooting off, especially when it speeds up. Wind it around a couple of times to get it started and then just snip off that thread so it doesn't get tangled. And then just keep, keep winding. until it's as full as you want it to be. And then you would snip it. Don't forget to slide this back so that the, uh, the needle's um, engaged. And then you would thread it up. To clean the machine, you need to unscrew these plates here. And your machine comes with a little uh, screwdriver like that. And you just turn them anti-clockwise, both of them until they're completely free. So you would remove your foot by passing the black lever at the back, remove this case lid and your bobbin before I start cleaning. I've unscrewed these so that it will just lift straight off. So continue to unscrew them. And then this plate will just easily lift off. And ideally, you should be cleaning your machine with the power off. So I'm going to do that now. So the machine comes with a handy little brush here for, for cleaning your machine. And 
you just get right in and there's going to be a lot of lint in here because I've left it so that you can see really and you just go right in there and get as much lint out as you possibly can right to the back into your feed dogs here and it's a nice stiff brush so it should do the job quite efficiently and then this little bobbin case here also lifts out give that a good brush give that a good clean out back and front hopefully you can see in here to go right in and just get as much lint out as you possibly can going Give it a good old good old clean I can see a big lump there And then you just bob it all back together again. Right, so you put your bobbing case back in. You want the um, cutout bit more or less to the back. There's a, a cutout bit, bit at the back that it slots into. Just make sure it's moving about freely. Put the plate on. You can lift this foot a little bit higher to get it underneath. And then your screws back in. And tighten them up with a little tool. Make sure it's all Nice and secure, and your little cover back on. And that's your cleaning. Okay, so just to compare with my old machine. So you've got a, a vertical spool holder here instead of a horizontal. And um, the thread goes across this first guide here and actually winds around. Then you've got a thread guide here back down here, along this tension dial here, and you would thread it through there, which is the equivalent of the thread guide there, you just actually physically thread it, and then you've got another thread guide here, and here, and one last one before you come to the needle, there's no needle in this at, the, at present. But the biggest difference between this machine and uh, the Genome is that you actually have to remove the tool tray to get into the bobbin. And that's the convenience of the, the more modern ones is that you don't have to remove this tool tray every time. And this one's clean out as well. Last one in here. Um, so the big difference here is that you've got your bobbin case is actually, you pull the bobbin case out. Uh, so your bobbin actually sits inside a bobbin case. And I personally wouldn't advise using metal bod bobbin cases in the Genome, uh, plastic ones in here. This came with a metal one, so I would use a metal on here. I'm not 100% sure whether it would make any difference or, or not, but I just wouldn't advise it. Um, and it's just a little bit 
just an extra step. It's not more complicated really, but it's just an extra step with these. Uh, and the bobbin would go inside this case in here, like that. And then you make sure that it's engaged, thread it through here. So hopefully you can see there, it's just going to slot into that slot there. Like that. And then it goes back in. And make sure it's fastened with these little catches here. And then you would uh, thread it up the same. So you actually don't, you don't need to uh, do anything with these to change the bobbin. That's just to take, to, to take it out and clean it. Oops. This bobbin per case comes out in and out quite easily. All you just need to make sure is that you hear that click and that it's engaged. I've just put a needle in so that you can see that it's, it's virtually the same mechanism for getting the uh, bobbin thread, thread through. So there's no needle up or down function on these machines, so you do have to uncrank it. Uh, and just by pulling your top thread, uh, thread taut, it will bring that bottom thread through. And you just need to get something underneath it to pull it all the way through. And then you've got both threads there. You just pull them again to the back. The only thing you need to remember with these older machines is when you start sewing is um, you really need to keep hold of the both threads before you start. So sewing. if you've um, got your Janome brand new, um, you will notice that you'll get a couple of feet included. So you've got your, the A foot is just the um, your standard foot. You should be able to do straight stitch and zigzags, most stitches on here, unless it tells you otherwise. When you change the stitches on here, it will tell you um, which number foot to, to use. So the button over foot comes as standard. This overcast foot, foot C, comes as standard, which is really useful if you've not got a, a serger because you can, um, you can finish your edges with that one. It's got a little brush on. Uh, and that is a blind hem foot. And that comes as standard as well, along with a little cleaning tool. And then you will get an extra spool pin, which fits in at the top here. There's a little square hole there, and that is for twin needling. That is a spool holder for um, holding larger spools of thread. And you usually get the uh, little tool um, for unscrewing these screws here. These machines, as far as I know, do not need oiling. Um, oh, and you get that as that's a spool holder as well. And when you put your thread in, that spool holder should go that way in to, to hold it on top of that pin. Uh, it might have to go that way. So some of the Gutemann, some of the Gutemann threads, uh, that hole is too narrow. Uh, so you you can put it that way as well. But ideally, it goes in that way, and it stops it flying off the end of that that little pin. And your on-off switch is there. That will make that noise when it's switched off and on. The tool tray is here, which you put your key feet or whatever you want in there, all your little tools. And it, that comes off, that just, that just slides off. And that gives you your free arm for getting into uh, sleeves and neck necklines or anything like that. Got your tension dial here. Uh, and then this display here tells you what stitch, uh, what number stitch you are you have um, what foot you need for that number stitch, uh, the width of your stitch and the length of your stitch. And on zero, zero, that's a straight stitch. 
So three and a half will put your needle to the middle. If you change, so you change by using these uh, directional key, keys here. So if you change up to seven, moves your, cat, your uh, needle right to the far right. And if you move it, zero zero it moves it to the far left and, um, and then you've got all your different stitch stitches there one useful thing on this machine is uh, this uh, dot here and that will um, lock a stitch so if you are on doing something quite fine and delicate and you don't want to go backwards and forwards to lock your stitches at the beginning and end of a seam that will do you five um, stitches to lock the stitch uh, and you don't have to do the backwards and forwards thing and it stops it sometimes looking messy or uh, your fabric bunching up. At the back here you've got a little switch and that drops your feed dogs. <laughs> feed dogs feed the fabrics through the machine uh, and you drop them sometimes if you don't want to feed your fabric through the machine and you want to have uh, more control over the fabric yourself. You can do that when uh, sewing on a button or something like that. Uh, and I will demonstrate that in my next video. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I've got a few ideas of um, some things that you can do on your machine that uh, might surprise you, which I'll bring uh, in a future video. Uh, but if you've got any requests uh, to do any kind of techniques on, on this machine, or they're all, they're all quite similar. Um, as far as I know, there's a, the genome is all thread up, up like this, and I think a lot of the electronic machines will thread up the same, so you should you should be okay. But if you've got, obviously I can only speak about the machines that I've got, so if yours is slightly different, it's for your brother or something like that, I am going to know the answer to that. Um, but, um, you know, if you want me to demonstrate any particular techniques, just let me know below. Um, like I say, this is what, I've done this video, this is an answer to... Uh, a call out from uh, from one of the comments uh, and I am trying to build a community here um, you know I, I want to uh, be responsive which is why I'm, I'm not pre-filming a lot of these videos I'm trying to do them day by day so that I can respond to any requests obviously I can't I can't do everything but uh, and I don't know everything I'm not an expert uh, I'm just an enthusiastic uh, dressmaker um, but I've got 30 years of, of sewing behind me, so I know I've probably forgotten more than, than, I, than I know. Uh, so yeah, please do leave comments below and uh, any, any constructive criticism as well. I, you know, I'm, I'm very new to this YouTubing lack. Uh, so if you've got anything that uh, you want to, any comments that you want to leave, uh, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. So thank you for joining me uh, and tomorrow I will bring a few little hints and tips um, about some surprising things that you can do with your sewing machine that you might not have known. Um, but until tomorrow, I shall speak to you later. Bye.